Hello students, today I have prepared a video lecture on IPv4 packet format. So we'll try to understand what do you mean by IPv4 packet format. The internet protocol version 4 is the delivery mechanism used by the TCP IP protocols. IPv4 is an unreliable connectionless datagram protocol which is best effort delivery service where best effort delivery service means it do not guarantees that the data would be delivered 100% the term best effort means that ipv4 provides no error control or flow control if reliability is important ipv4 must be paired with a reliable protocol such as tcp here if you talk about IPv4 protocol, it lies under the network layer of the OSI reference model. IPv4 is also a connectionless protocol for packet switching network that uses the datagram approach. This means that each datagram or a packet is handled independently and each datagram can follow a different route to reach the destination now routing independently is just possible because it supports connectionless protocol here comes the actual datagram or the packet format one should understand the packet or the datagram is made up of header and data the header is just like a driver for a car where driver knows where to start and where to end. Here, the minimum size of the header could be 20 bytes while maximum would be 60 bytes. The total length of the packet may be up to 65535 bytes. Now, here if you see, header is made up of 5 rows, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, while extra is the options. Here if you look carefully, each row is made up of 32 bits. So 32 bits into 5 turns out to be 160 bits. If we write it in terms of byte, it is 20 byte. That's the reason the minimum size of the header can be 20 bytes and maximum 60 bytes including options. Now we'll try to understand each field in detail. Packets in the IPv4 layer are called as datagram. A datagram is a variable length packet consisting of two parts, header and data. As we know very well, header can be minimum of 20 bytes and maximum 60 bytes. It contains the information essential for routing. The first field is the version made up of four bits. It decides whether the packet belongs to version 4 or version 6. Next field is the header length which is of 4 bit field. This field decide whether the header length would be 20 bytes or 60 bytes. If the header field comprises of 5 it is 20 bytes because 5 into 4 is 20 and if header length field that means all 4 bits are 111 the decimal equivalent is 15, 15 into 4 turns out to be 60 bytes. So if it is 5, 5 into 4, it would be 20 bytes. If the value in each length is 15, the header length would be 60 bytes. Next field is service, which is of 8-bit field. This field previously was called as service type. Now it is called as differentiated service it is of 8 bits the first three bits are nothing but precedence also called as priority if all these bits are zero the packet has low priority if all these bits are one the packet if all these bits are one the packet would have high priority next four bits are tos which stands for type of service where D stands for delay, T stands for throughput, R stands for reliability, and C stands for cost. 
If D bit is 1, it will give minimize delay. If T bit is 1, it will give maximize throughput. If R bit is 1, it will give maximize reliability. If C bit is 1, the packet will support minimize cost and if all these bits are 0, it is a default packet. Next field is total length which is of 16 bit. To find the length of data coming from the upper layer, subtract the header length from the total length. Basically, the total length of the packet is 2 raised to 16 which turns out to be 65535 bytes. So here we have discussed the first row of the packet format. Now we'll try to understand the second row of the packet format which are identification, flag and fragmentation offset. Please remember the second row of the packet format is dedicated for fragmentation. What do you mean by fragmentation? Fragmentation means breaking down of packet into small parts. When fragmentation is done, when the packet size is large as compared to the MTU of the physical network, where MTU stands for maximum transmission unit. Whenever the packets are fragmented at the center side, again they are need to be rejoined. So for that purpose, the fragments which belongs to that particular packet need to be identified properly. For that purpose, the 16 bits fields are being reserved. To guarantee uniqueness, the IPv4 protocol uses a counter to label the datagram. All the fragments which have the same identification number, the same as the original packet. Next field is flag, which is of 3 bit field, where the first field is reserved. The second field is nothing but do not fragment. If its value is 1, the machine will not fragment that packet. Next field is M, more fragment. The third bit is called as move fragment. If its value is 1, it means the datagram is not the last fragment. There are more fragments after this one. So basically, MF bit is useful for the receiver to judge whether it is last fragment or more fragments are there to be received. The next field is fragmentation offset. This is 13 bit field which shows the relative position of this fragment with respect to the whole datagram or the packet. So basically it is used to get how offset of or how far a fragment is from the whole datagram. Next field is nothing but time to leave, which indicates the lifetime of a packet within a network. A datagram has a lifetime limited lifetime in its travel through an internet. This field was original designed to hold a timestamp. Next field is protocol. This is 8-bit field which defines the higher level protocol that uses the service of IPv4. So an IPv4 packet can encapsulate data from several higher level protocol such as TCP, UDP, ICMP and IGMP. This field specifies the final destination protocol to which the IPv4 packet is delivered. So depending upon the field value, it will be delivered to respective protocols. So if the value is 1, the packet would be delivered to ICMP. If the value is 2, it would be delivered to IGMP. Likewise, if the value is 89, it would be delivered to OSPF. Next field is checksum. Please remember the checksum field is necessary for error detection purpose. The next field is source address. This is 32 bit field which defines the IPv4 address of the source. Here, this field must remain unchanged during the time the IPv4 datagram travels from the source host to the destination host. So basically, source address gives where the packet starts. 
and where the packet is going to be stopped or ended is determined by the destination address. The destination address is a 32-bit field which define IP before address of the destination. This field must remain unchanged during the time the packet travels from host to destination. And finally comes the options. So options basically decides the size of the header. If the options are not used, the header size would be 20 bytes. And if the options are being used, it will reach up to maximum 60 bytes. Options as the name implies are not required for a packet. They can be used for network testing and troubleshooting or debugging purpose. Although Options are not required part of the IPv4 header. Option processing is required at the IPv4 software. So here the options can be categorized into two parts, single byte or multi byte. If it is a single byte, it may be no operation or end of option. If it is multi byte, it can be record root, strict source route, loose source route or timestamp. An end of the option is one byte option used for padding at the end of the option field, which is a single byte option. Coming to the multi byte, we know very well in multi byte there are four categories. The first is record route option, which is used to record the internet routers that handle the packet. It can list up to nine router address. So basically as the name indicates record, so it is going to record the internet routers which are going to be handled the packet. Next, a strict source root option is used by the source to predetermine a route for the datagram as it travels through the internet. So basically in strict source root, at the source side only, the route is going to be predetermined. Finally, a loose source route is similar to strict source route, but it is less rigid. From the name itself, it indicates loose, which means it is less rigid. A timestamp option is used to record the time of the datagram processed by a router. So with this, we have discussed a very, very important part of IPv4 packet or the datagram format. So one should remember the header which would be minimum of 20 bytes and maximum of 60 bytes. The total length of the packet would be 65535 bytes. Version indicates which version it belongs to whether version 4 or 6. Header length decide whether it would be 20 bytes or 60 bytes. The TOS or the service type of service decides the priority, the delay, the throughput, the reliability of the packet. The total length indicates the total length of the packet. The second row is totally dedicated for the fragmentation of the packet. Whether uh, the packet is fragmented or not is going to be decided by the flag field. Fragmentation offset decide how far a fragment is from the original packet. Time to leave indicates for how long a packet is alive in a network. The protocol field indicates which higher level protocol a packet is going to be delivered. The header checksum field indicates the error detection process. The source IP address is of 32 bit which is being denoted in dotted decimal fashion. The destination IP address is again of 32 bits which is also denoted in dotted decimal fashion. And finally the option which are of two categories a single byte or a multi byte. Thank you.